G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder. Today I'm going to be showing you a plane that I normally wouldn't be sort of having a look at and that is a premium plane, the G91R4. And the reason why I don't normally look at premiums like this is because I really don't want to be encouraging people to go out and buy something that they don't have a lot of experience with. You see, jet combat is fairly complicated. Not only do you have to get a hold of the game, but if you've just picked up War Thunder and maybe have uh, less than 100 hours, then you're sort of just getting familiar with the game itself. And then by buying one of these jets, you're kind of throwing yourself into the deep end. I would, I would probably expect most people who start off with jets, or at least who buy a jet almost off the bat or with very little experience in jets, it's when to have a bit of a hard time, and that's because jet combat is a lot different than prop combat. The first thing to note is that you can't just sort of turn and burn. The big thing with jet combat is that speed is your life. And something like this type of plane does not particularly suit speed-based combat very well. In fact, whilst this plane is fairly easy to fly without missiles, most of the time you're going to actually want to take the missiles and this is going to make the plane a whole different beast. The G91 is one of the easier planes, at least as a jet premium to be flying, uh, and is probably one of the ones that I would more sort of lean to recommending because it's kind of easy to pick up, it's fairly straightforward, but there are certain little things that you need to be aware of with this particular jet and as well as other things like the MiG-17 AS, the Shenyang F5, the F-30 Sabre, the Harriers, all these types of jets all play a little bit differently. The big one though is your speed. You don't want to be bleeding speed with no good reason. If you can sort of avoid that, if you can keep your speed up, then I would recommend doing so. That's kind of like in props where you would keep your altitude instead. Now, in this case here, I am climbing, and that's because climbing in jets, especially with the current meta where everyone is tending to climb a little bit more, is very beneficial. You can't really maintain your top speed, especially with missiles, and of course, as a G91, your top speed is really nothing to sniff at at this type of battle rating. You're at 8.7, you're, in this case here, facing, I believe it's 9.7s in this case. So you're not really going to be the speedy boy out there. And, if, and what you need to do instead is be the energy boy. You need to be the one that is able to get the drop on your opponent. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm going for a little bit of a climb. I've noticed that there are a couple of enemies, but I can see a G91 in the distance. I can see an F11 in the distance. The F11 in particular is the one that I'm going to be looking out for because they are very quick. And of course, they're the ones that can uh, sort of lead my team out into a lemming train. And that's not what I want. I want them to group up into a furball because I know with things like MiG-17s, uh, G91s, they're going to more than likely win those types of furballs. The F-11 is one of my top priorities, but I've noticed here that there is a grouping of enemies underneath me and this is where I want to go. It's kind of like boom and zoom. You keep your altitude and then you dive up on your opponents and then you convert that speed back into altitude by pulling up into a zoom climb. However, with jets, you can do what's called a reverse boom and zoom. You can go from below, come up, and then keep going. Or you can dive on someone and keep on diving and then just keep your speed. Because with jets, it's a lot easier to burst up to your top speed. Whereas with props, it doesn't quite work that way. Now, engaging this F2 here, reason why is because he's slow. And like I said, I'm going to be doing that exact thing that I just described. I'm going to go for the dive, pick up a little bit of speed, and then I'm going to continue straight, keeping that speed, and then gently turn so as not to bleed as much speed as I, uh, as I can. And pick a target here. I'm thinking Hunter, I'm thinking F11, thinking Hunter, thinking F11, and of course I'm going to be picking the F11 because it doesn't look like he's paying attention. As well as that, the F11, if I can get rid of him, like I said, I can prevent the lemming trains and that is something that I want to do. So I'm going to send him a little present in the form of an AIM-9B and because it's so close he doesn't have time to react and I managed to get a critical hit. Once I manage to take him out, I'm going to look at another target, and this is the Hunter. Now, I'm going to try and turn inside of him, because I know if I can get on the inside, I am uh, basically at Winner Winner Chicken Dinner level here. I'm going to prep another 9B and send it on its way. Now, 
remember with the 9Bs that you cannot launch them if you ha are pulling more than one or two Gs. I think it's I think it's about two or three Gs. So you have to be quite careful with the way you pull it. Although I have heard that if you do some uh, negative Gs, it does tend to make the situation a little bit better. So once we have these three kills secured, what we're gonna do now is look to help our teammates out. I'm seeing who is in need of a bit of help and maybe someone is uh, in, a, in a sort of situation of opportunity and this hunter here seems to be the target of opportunity. So I'm going to look towards him but because he's turning out and the F Saber is behind him, I'm going to go for the F Saber because the, this guy here is not paying attention and could potentially be a very, very easy kill. So just as he turns around, I'm able to keep up with his roll rate. It is slightly lower on the G91, uh, but again here, I'm going to turn that speed into altitude again, get a little bit of distance behind him so that I can re-approach for another shot. You don't have to sit behind an enemy, you can always go back up and then come back down again, and that's exactly what I've done here, resulting in a beautiful, beautiful pilot slide. So, we are basically looking now at uh, securing the bag and finishing off this game with a few lovely little kills. I'm looking at the hunter here and it seems like he's a little bit slow. So you know what I'm going to do, I'm just going to send the one his way, hopefully it hits. And if it doesn't, that's fine, but it looks like the F5 is struggling to keep up, I'm not really sure. Either way, I managed to land myself a hit with the missile, resulting in a kill. This type of gameplay really suits the G91. You have a situation where you're the, the one to do the little bit of zoomies with the AIM-9Bs. And once you get rid of those AIM-9Bs, you can become very light and start dogfighting. After about two AIM-9Bs, you lose so much weight. It's like it's like you go to the gym and you just shred. It's, it's truly incredible the amount of weight those AIM-9Bs carry. So once you lose those AIM-9Bs, those two, maybe three, you become an absolutely incredible dogfighting machine. And if I've got my uh, if I've got my memory correct, uh, this next match will sort of demonstrate that. But of course, it's not over yet. We have an enemy Vautour who is left, and the blind hunt is, uh, you know, not going to show us because it's done by the enemy. Uh, but unfortunately for him, he's uh, come a little bit too close to myself as well as a friendly. He's done the smart thing here, he's only a Vortor 2B. Um, what I probably would have done in this case is land and bail because there's no real point doing anything. Uh, I'm going to go for a quick shot, I get hit and I'm not going to spray anymore. I'm going to keep my turns nice and wide and re-approach, realign myself for another approach and I manage to get a little bit of a hit. The Vortor goes upside down, unfortunately can't correct and that leaves me with kill number 6. This is the type of stuff that you can do in the G91R4. In fact, you can do this on almost any other G91, even the ones without missiles. The way the G91 works is it is really light, it accelerates really well, and the guns are not really meant to get that one hit, but you're meant to work your opponent down to get them nice and slow and then finish them off with a bit of gun time when they're nice and slow. And that's the kind of thing that I like to do in the G91. That's what makes the G91s for me so special. Um, speaking of special, I've also been doing the event. Now, for those of you that have been doing the event and have caught me in game, um, you've probably noticed I'm a little bit, a little bit on the salty side, a little bit, just, just a touch salted. And that's kind of because uh, I've, I've been playing the game for long periods of time and uh, getting very tired doing that. So. Yeah, Tired Me and War Thunder doesn't really mix well. But you know what does mix well? A uh, An AIM-9B and an A4 Skyhawk. So what we're going to do, send it in, and unfortunately I steal the kill, which isn't really ideal. But unfortunately the missile was already on the way. That's... Uh, I feel, I feel kind of crap, but that's okay. We're going to make it up by uh, being a good teammate and trying to help out our, uh, our team. So, what do we have here? In this situation, you can see a couple of planes that are below. You have that Sabre who's closing the distance quite quickly, and he might be a threat, but at the same time, he's sort of off with, not well, quite off with the fairies, but he's, he's off doing his own thing. It's all right, there's not too much to, to say or do, but uh, our next target here might be this A4. 
Unfortunately, it's not the Panther or the Cougar decides he wants to go for a quick head-on and uh, then gets quickly shut down by the Meteor. So, next target here looks like it could be the F-Saber, looks like it could be that other Panther and the Panther is going to be a bane in this thing. It's got the, the Cougar has uh, really nice wing loading, the or, or at least has really nice low speed maneuverability. Uh, but unfortunately, if you take shady head-ons with Meteors, you're not really going to make, make a lot of use of that. So, next target here, A4. I didn't realize he was going for a shady last minute head-on. Don't do that because it is extremely risky. And now, the A4 has basically put himself in a bit of a hairy situation. He's decided to turn underneath me, which basically leaves him super vulnerable because I am better turning than him. And um, no amount of flares is going to save you from 50 cals. And that's exactly what happens. I've set him on fire with some 50 cals, and that is basically all she wrote about the A4. Now, having a look at the situation here, I have three M9Bs. I have a little bit of uh, ammunition left, or plenty of ammunition left. And I have a few enemies that need dealing with. So we're going to head over to there, and it looks like there is a pretty intense dogfight that is sort of brewing uh, over over that sort of section of the map. Now, when your enemies are in a sort of numbers advantage, then you've really got to do some work to thin out the herd. Doing that gives you that little edge that can sort of take you over to victory. And of course, with victory comes RP, and what you want to do is you want to preserve your plane. So you don't want to go in there, take every head on, all that sort of stuff. No, you don't want to do that. What you should, you should be doing ideally is looking for the slow targets, trying not to take head ons and A5 Saber is our first victim here. Unfortunately, I don't get any hits and I'm going to be keeping my speed. I'm going to keep myself in a straight line, try and dodge a couple of shots. Unfortunately, get clipped a little bit by the A5, but that's okay because we've kept our speed. We are now faster than the A5 and some teammates are now dealing with him. So, what's next? F9F Panther looking straight at my face. No last minute head on for you. No last minute head on for you, Mr. F25. And our last target here in the back of the stack is uh, looking to be this F-Saber. But he's pretty far away, and the dogfight here is going to be fairly intense. I really don't want to leave this Itonda in the in the dust, and I don't want to leave the MiG-17 either. So F-A5 gets uh, set on fire. F-35 is coming in nice and hot. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put myself up into a vertical, and you can see just how heavy this thing is with uh, a couple of missiles. It's still barely light enough where... If you have a little bit of speed, you can do some work against the, uh, the the sabers, but you don't really have all the options in the world, and that's something that you have to keep in mind. Speaking of all the options in the world, the uh, F-25 is in a little bit of a pickle. Now, I can't get my shots on, but I've noticed he's put his air brake out, and he's about to smack himself into the trees. Unfortunately, he doesn't quite do that for me. That would have been lovely. Oh, never mind. There he goes. And now I'm in a vertical fight with a panther, and an F-35. Now, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch this Panther stall out in front of me, send him a missile, and then finish off the F-35, who has put 6-9 on their wings, and uh, give them a little bit of a 6-9 um, themselves. So there you go. Another little ace, and that's kind of the way it goes in the G-91. Like I said, by loosening up those missiles, getting rid of them, it's something that you can really do to make the most of your dogfighting capabilities. And that's what, for me, is really special about the G91. I would actually recommend taking these missiles. If I could take two only, I probably would. Uh, but honestly, having those extra two for total is really nice and handy. Something like that, you can genuinely make use out of them. And of course, if you don't, you can always just launch them at the sun if you really so wish. Not only that, I have been using this plane a lot to do the uh, event that's going on at the moment. And of course, it's fairly good, this battle reading. You have a couple of Canberras that go to space. You let, let them milk out the timer. And you just strap on some rockets, some, uh, I think it's Mighty Mouse rockets. And you just go for the hills. It's absolutely great. You have plenty of potential on all fronts. Um, you also have the Nords if you really want, or the, the yeah the the Nords. So you can do whatever you want there. I think it takes three of them to take out a destroyer. So keep that in mind. Um, I've pretty much just really enjoyed this plane. It's been fantastic, and the more I play of it, the more I enjoy it. 
provided of course that your team isn't monkey and they don't do a heck and disappear, you'll pretty much have a good time every single time, and that's just the way of the G91. I, I really enjoyed the G91 when it first came to War Thunder in the form of the G91 Pre and the G91R1. Um, both of these planes were remarkable and they were quite good. They had great acceleration and just as the R3 and the R4 that have come since, I really enjoy all of these planes and just playing them out is, is nice. It's just the way it is. And honestly, if you have a little bit of experience in the game, I can recommend these. I can wholeheartedly recommend these. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen,